Hello everyone, it is Two Shits Gabby, and I have the box of nickels here that I want to get to and see if I can find a... Wartime silver and maybe a buffalo nickel in there today. I keep all the older stuff from 1959 and older. That is my hoarding process. I, I'm not yet ready to commit to uh, keep all of the uh, nickels, but um, I do like to keep the older ones. So let's get started. No enders really to speak of. I saw a few that looked older, but we'll, we'll see what we find. Well, my very first row I find in 1947. This one is a Philadelphia. So we've already got one to keep. And I'm also keeping my eye out for 2009 or 2024 today since they are lower mintage and uh, pretty... Pretty fun to find those as well. Well, here's the second row, and already in 1839. Let's see if we've got a mint mark. No mint mark. This one's a little bit worn, but uh, pretty old, 1939. So I was reading an article last night, uh, a Wall Street Journal article, that said that recent studies have found that there are $68 million dollars thrown away each year now in change. Unbelievable. Oh, what's that? 1952. That one is a D. There's three of them already. Cool. A, um, what do they call it? A energy to wait. Waste to energy company is a couple of different waste to energy companies are now when they're going through keeping the metal, they're actually pulling out the coins and finding out the ones that are still good. Some of them are getting bent or torn up or burnt or something, incinerators. And they're taking the coins, and one company has already, uh, I believe it said they've already recycled or retrieved $9 million in change that they have turned back in. <laughs> just Instead of just scrap metal, they're actually... To, they got people handpicking out change, and they've retrieved $9 million. Well, it is much later in the afternoon. I have gone to some, a couple of banks. I didn't go to all of them I wanted to. Uh, I guess I'll try to get the other two in the morning. Stopped and did some other stuff, then came home and ate lunch and watched some TV with my wife. And uh, my mom came over, and we were just chatting. And so I was looking through a few rolls while we were chatting. And uh, here's, I got a 1940 and 241s and the 55 just while we were sitting here chatting. So I didn't want to interrupt. So I didn't say anything. But uh, the 55 is a 55D. And one of the 41s is an S. But I have all those that I need in my book. None of these will fit in either of my three books. But these are just four more that I will tuck away. A couple rolls later, and I come to a 19 and 46. I hope I find a 42 through 45 while I'm going through this box. This one's a Philadelphia. So, um, you know, I found a Canadian nickel a minute ago. I don't remember if I mentioned that or not. It's a 1988, I think. But um, I did want to mention that if you are into any hoarding uh the 1946 through 1981 uh queen elizabeth started on 1955 so the 55 through 81 those are 99 percent copper oh there's a 52 there that's uh philadelphia and they're worth a little bit over seven cents each so i think i'm gonna go through mine and pull those out and keep those. That's kind of cool. Now, the 1982 um, through 1999, those are like our nickels. Those are 75% copper and 25% nickel, and they're just a hair over five cents each, which ain't bad, but I'm not going to keep those right now, but I think I will keep the others. Uh, 
I believe this is the 19th roll I'm in, and I found a proof, and then there's a 1949 right behind it. I don't find very many proofs. That's pretty cool, 1999S. A little bit of scuffing in the mirror area, but I still I saw it right away. Man, yeah, pretty nifty. And a 1949 Denver. Cool. Well, that was a fun find. Boy, I tell you what, I just ain't finding no 2024s. I, I have found one this year. <laughs> Obviously this year. But, um, boy, I was hoping I might find more of them. You know, they made a lot more 2024 um, nickels than they do the half dollars. Well, I guess I haven't gotten a box of the 2024 half dollars yet, but you get whole boxes of them and they didn't make as many of them. There's a 58, a little rough there, something around it, 58D, kind of dirty. Well, that's pretty neat. Another dirty one. Yeah, I think here in just a minute I will go pull out my Canadian clad bag and pull out the nickels and see uh, how many I've got that are the 99.9% .9 nickel. That's kind of neat. Boy, it would sure be fun to get a whole box of 2014 nickels. Golly, that'd be a chunk of money. I haven't checked in the last month. I'm sure they've come down a little bit, but man, they, they were selling crazy. Just a portion of that would still be good money. Look at this. I found a 2009. How cool. I wasn't expecting to find one. 2009D. That's nice. While I was at the banks today, both of the two banks with the coin machines, in one of the coin machines was just a regular quarter and one was a dime. So I, just, I added 35 more cents to my uh, bank account when I deposited it. It's so funny to me that people just leave that behind. This one looks like Winnie the Pooh got into a jar of honey. That is a mess. It was stuck to the other one, by the way, and I had to pull them apart. Would you look at that? Ain't that a pretty sight? Let's turn it over and see if we get a date. It's pretty worn back there, so there's a good chance it don't have a date. Ooh. Oh, goodness, I don't see a date. I've got that liquid stuff I might put on it a little later. Let's see if anything pops up. That's a shame. Fun to find those guys. Oh, yeah, I wanted to show you this, too. Uh, the bank teller had these waiting for me while I was there today. It was a 1943 steel and a Canadian dime came out of the coin machine. I don't know when, but she just had it held aside for me. 1977. So anyway, that's two more that they give me. That's always fun. Are you curious as how much it cost the mint, the federal mint, to produce our coins? I've got them written down over here. I can tell you. 
to produce a penny, it costs a little bit, just a hair over three cents each to make the, the U.S. penny. And it costs 11 and a half, just a little over 11 and a half cents each to make a nickel. Oh, I think I see an older one there, 1953. Denver. There's another older one. So they're losing money on the penny and the nickels, but on the dimes, it only costs just a hair over a nickel to produce the dimes. And to make a quarter, it costs just a hair over 11 and a half cents each. And to produce the half dollar, it's just almost 26 cents each. So they're making up for the losing money on the penny and nickel with the other coins. They have been asking Congress, I guess, if Congress would come up with a different alloy to make them, to make it uh, more feasible. But that hasn't happened yet. And of course, there's also people telling them just to quit making them all together. So... I would imagine at some point they're going to come up with a decision, but it's like every year they put it off. I don't know about you, but in my opinion, the people that are kind of running things now, that's not their focus. Their focus is making millions of dollars. Well, I'm now in the sixth row in the second half of the box, and I finally come to a 1946. Look at the color of that thing. Way different than the other coins. But uh, it's, really, it's in really good shape, too. You know, I wish there was a way you could tell if it was 35% um, silver, but you just can't hardly tell unless you send it in to have it done, and it probably ain't. I'll save it, and then maybe someday I'll relook at it. I don't know. Philadelphia. It's in awfully good shape for as old as it is. Awfully good. I think I also found like another, where is it? There it is. A 50, another 53, I believe. Yeah. That's all I have found. Kind of a long dry spell there. Look what the next row brought me. <laughs> this is, this is what I do it for right here, folks. To get these silver coins. A 1943 Philadelphia wartime silver, 35% silver. Love fine. I've, you know, about 10, 12 years ago, it all started with me with the silver. I went to start looking for silver. I've gotten into the copper and stuff since then, but I just love the silver. <laughs> I, re I really do. I'd like to get into gold a little bit more, but being in Kentucky, it's not as easy to get to unless I want to start doing the, uh, recycling stuff, which is not a bad idea. I've got a few little things put away. I may, uh, after I get my electricity done and just see how things go with my shed, getting things cleaned up, I may do something like that. I think it'd be pretty fun. But, uh, we'll see. That'll maybe next year, but this year I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. And then, uh, let the new year come in. This is the 10th row in the second half, and here is a 1947. It's not a beauty. Philadelphia. Boy, I, I found a buffalo, and I found a 2009, and I found a silver. I'd love to find a 2024, or a V-nickel, either one of those. I'd, I'd be happy with either one of those. Be pretty cool to find that. Hey, there's a 54. I'm putting a few nickels away today. 54D. Well, this is pretty cool, folks. I think I have like 11 rolls to go. And here is another 2009. This one is a Philadelphia and the other is a Denver. The Philadelphia, they made like 39 million of them. And the Denver, they made like 46 million of them. 
which is pretty low considering in 2008 and 2010 they made I think over over a billion uh, of the Philadelphia Denver in each year considerably over a billion when you add the two together so that's really neat I think it's the first time I've gotten two 2009s in one box I'd be willing to get a third should it present itself to me. Looks like nothing else in this row. Man, I want a 2024. Goodness, folks, the very next row, and there's another 2009. I, <laughs> I have gone so many boxes and haven't found one, and I have found three in this box. That's pretty crazy. It's crazy, I tell you. Anything else in here? I, I, in order to keep the video from getting too long, I think I'm not going to pull the nickels out. Look, oh, what was that? The Canadian nickels. Yeah, that was a 57. Ah, there you go. I'll just, I'll do a little a quick video by itself later on. And then talk a little bit more about that. So I'm not going to do that. I hope you aren't disappointed. And now with six rolls to go, here's a 1948. Let's check the mint mark. The S is a semi key date. This one is a Philadelphia. Winding down, getting toward the end. Boy, it'd be great to find one more silver, but I got one and that's cool. I'm happy with that. Can't believe I got three 2009s. Got a proof coin. Got a buffalo nickel. Unfortunately, there's no date on it. And we got six rolls left to find something else. I think in those last couple of rolls, I found one more from the 50s. But uh, here's the three 2009s, two Ps and a D. And here is my silver. That puts me at 143 silvers this year. A buffalo, no date, sadly. So they got 50s and 40s. You got one from the 30s. I had two um, Canadian. And then I got the uh, mint as well. I mean, the proof as well. So pretty pretty neat box, actually. I think it's really good. Um, not Not bad at all these days. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up right there. I hope you enjoy the video. Let me know what you think. If you have any comments or questions, I'd love to hear from you.